Welcome back. This is Violin Teacher, and we are studying Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter. Requested by Riley, my good friend and subscriber. And I, let's see, where did we leave off? Um, <laughs> lots of accidentals, and I think it was the beginning of line 16, or I'm sorry, measure 16, line 4. Okay, so what what is ahead looks pretty easy, okay? Now, if you will stick around for the end of this video, I will give you a good tip for your practice, something that you need to know. So stick around. And if you can get something from this video or the other videos in this series, I hope you will like them. That's a great favor for me. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're starting in measure 17 at the pickup. Pickups are up, though, right? And that's three on D, and we're going to go three and then one. Now hold that one because we're going to do that uh, pair of notes a couple times. All right, so let's do it again. Pretty easy. And I don't know if you can hear my violin ringing, but remember, ringing threes mean you're playing in tune because they set the open strings vibrating sympathetically. That was an early tip for you guys. Okay, but you knew it already, I know. Okay, so after we do that, then go to two, which will be easy to find because one is sitting there, so it's a low two. Slide the one back. Now, now we have to find F sharp. Let's see how we're going to do that. I think the best thing is to reach for it. Alright, see how messy those are, accidentals are really? So, alright, let's look at that. What fingers? And we have options, really. Uh, so if you would rather use, uh, say, if you've got low one, might be better to use third finger. Might be better to use third finger there. We've got low one in a kind of half position. It's right under your hand there. And then you could slide the three up to its natural position. All right, so then you've got one and it slides back again. So let's go back to the beginning of this measure, or this uh, phrase, where you go three, one. Two, one, slide one back. Now let's borrow the three, it's right there under your hand. Slide it up. A half a step, regular one, then one slides back again. All right, now we've done this before in a, in, a, in a previous measure where we had a low one followed by that that B flat or A sharp. So hold that one and then the two on G will be just a whole step away. Now let's check it and make sure. So that's an A sharp that the music calls for, but let's let's play open G. So there's the tone, and we were right. So if you play F, if you play A sharp, that's also the target note. So we're playing it with low one here. So you can listen and try to match that pitch. All right, then what comes after? And I would just slide the two up. Then you've got B natural and B natural here on a long note. And if on these long notes, go ahead and take another bow if you need it. Okay, when you're playing it fast enough, you probably won't need it. Um, okay, so let's start back at measure 16, 17 with a pickup. Ready, go, three, one. 
One more. Now two. One. Slide back. Now borrow the three. It's right under your hand. Slide it up one half step. Regular one. Slide it back. Then you go to the G and it's a whole step away, right under your hand. Slide it up a half step. One on D, one on A. Now we're going to start that sequence again. Three, one, three, one. Three this time. Slide the two down. Hold on to it. We're going to just reach for that. Three. Slide the one down. Hold the one while you get the two on G. Now three. Regular three. Lots of room there. One, two, three. There's four notes with three beats each. All right, let's review the, um, let's see, measure from 25, pick up to 26. Pickups are up bow. Here we go. Three, one. Second time we're doing it. We're going to go to third finger. Second, walk down, slide. Hold on to it. Reach. Walk down, slide. Hold on to that. Just a whole step away. Now, three, one on D. All right, very good. That is some hard stuff. So if, if you can practice these um, chromatic steps and everything, you're getting some really good technique work done for the left hand. And now is the time for the end of this video's tip. And I wanted to just share with you something that I t tell my students. Uh, and I always know when they haven't listened enough. Now, some some teachers will tell you, don't listen to the music. But I am a big advocate of listening to the music that you're studying. And always listen to great players playing. And that way you get an idea of the, uh, the tune of the song. And also a lot of other things that you can just absorb from listening. So I... Uh, in, I tell them that there are the four F's. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of the four H's, four H club. Well, I have the four F's, and if you have any one of the four F's, then you haven't listened enough. It doesn't matter if you've listened a hundred times. If you don't, if you have one of these problems in your music, then you need to listen a little more, okay? One of them is feeble tone. One of them is false intonation, and that is where the fingers are going down in the wrong place, like you don't know the notes. Forgetful fingers, where you stop and you have to think, what's the next note? I don't even know. Okay, not enough listening. And faulty rhythm, of course. If you're not playing the right rhythms, you have no idea what the, the tune of the piece is. So the four Fs tell the teacher, me, violin teacher, that you need to listen a little bit more. And that's not to me talking. That's to some great player playing the song as an example. You can find a lot of great players on YouTube playing the pieces that you want to learn. So listening is a great teacher. It's your first teacher. It's how you learn to talk. So if you think of violin playing as another language, music as a second language, a universal language, then you understand that listening is really important to your progress. All right, let's go to the next video. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you soon.